Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will compare alveolar and interstitial pneumonia. We will go through different points of comparison and see in which ways the two types of pneumonia are similar and how they differ. Alveolar pneumonia, also known as lobular pneumonia or lobar pneumonia, is a type of pneumonia that affects a large area of one or more lobes of the lung. It is characterized by inflammation of the alveoli, so the tiny air sacs in the lungs, where oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged. This inflammation causes the alveoli to fill up with fluid, pus and inflammatory cells, which can make it difficult to breathe. Interstitial pneumonia, also known as interstitial lung disease, refers to a group of conditions that cause inflammation and scarring in the interstitium, which is the delicate tissue that supports the air sacs in the lungs. This inflammation and scarring can make it difficult for oxygen to move in and carbon dioxide to move out of the lungs leading to shortness of breath, fatigue and other respiratory problems. What are the causative agents of alveolar and interstitial pneumonia? Alveolar pneumonia is typically caused by bacteria, viruses or fungi. The most common bacterial causes of alveolar pneumonia are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Staphylococcus aureus and Haemophilus influenzae. The most common viral causes of alveolar pneumonia are the influenza virus, the respiratory syncytial virus and the para-influenza virus. The most common fungal causes of alveolar pneumonia are Histoplasma capsulatum and Blastomyces dermatitidis. Interstitial pneumonia is typically caused by viruses, autoimmune diseases or environmental exposures. The most common viral causes of interstitial pneumonia are the Epstein-Barr virus, the Cytomegalovirus and the human herpesvirus 6. The most common autoimmune causes of interstitial pneumonia are idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, sarcoidosis and rheumatoid arthritis. The most common environmental exposures that cause interstitial pneumonia are asbestos, silica and beryllium. What is the site of inflammation? The inflammation in alveolar pneumonia is primarily located in the alveoli, so the tiny air sacs in the lungs that are responsible for gas exchange. The alveoli are filled with a fluid that allows oxygen to diffuse from the air into the bloodstream and carbon dioxide to diffuse from the bloodstream into the air. When the alveoli become inflamed, the fluid in the alveoli becomes thickened and sticky, making it difficult for oxygen and carbon dioxide to diffuse. This can lead to respiratory distress and hypoxemia, a condition in which the body does not receive enough oxygen. The inflammation in interstitial pneumonia is primarily located in the interstitial space, so the tissue that surrounds the alveoli. The interstitial space contains a network of capillaries which are tiny blood vessels that deliver oxygen and nutrients to the alveoli. When the interstitial space becomes inflamed, the capillaries become constricted and so reduce the amount of oxygen and nutrients that can reach the alveoli. This can lead to respiratory distress and hypoxemia. Which inflammatory cells are involved? The primary inflammatory cells in alveolar pneumonia are neutrophils, which are white blood cells that are responsible for fighting bacterial infections primarily. 
Neutrophils release a variety of enzymes and other substances that can damage the walls of the alveoli. This can lead to the formation of exudate, which is a fluid that contains dead neutrophils and other cellular debris. The primary inflammatory cells in interstitial pneumonia are lymphocytes and plasma cells. Lymphocytes are white blood cells that are responsible for fighting viral and fungal infections primarily, while plasma cells are white blood cells that produce antibodies. The antibodies produced by plasma cells can attach to the surface of the alveoli and trigger an inflammatory response. This can lead to the formation of scar tissue, which can eventually obstruct the alveoli. Which cytokines are involved? Cytokines are small proteins that are released by cells in response to inflammation. Interleukin-8, also known as CXCL8, is a cytokine that is important in the recruitment of neutrophils to the alveoli. Tumor necrosis factor alpha is another cytokine that is important in the pathogenesis of alveolar pneumonia. Tumor necrosis factor alpha can cause the release of other inflammatory mediators, such as interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-6. Interleukin-1 beta and interleukin-6 are also important cytokines in the pathogenesis of interstitial pneumonia. Interleukin-1 beta can activate neutrophils and other immune cells, while interleukin-6 can stimulate the production of antibodies and other immune molecules. Which chemokines play an important role? In alveolar pneumonia, CXCL8 and CXCL12 are chemokines that are important in the recruitment of neutrophils to the alveoli. CXCL8 is also known as leukotrien B4, while CXCL12 is also known as CDF1 alpha. In interstitial pneumonia, CCL2 and CCL5, also known as the Rontes, are chemokines that are important in the recruitment of lymphocytes and plasma cells to the interstitial space. Which are the important growth factors? VEGF, also known as vascular endothelial growth factor, is a growth factor that is important in the angiogenesis, so the formation of new blood vessels, that occurs in alveolar pneumonia. Vascular endothelial growth factor can help to deliver oxygen and nutrients to the inflamed alveoli. TGF beta, also known as transforming growth factor beta, and PDGF, also known as platelet derived growth factor, are growth factors that are important in the fibrosis that occurs in interstitial pneumonia. TGF beta can stimulate the production of scar tissue, while PDGF can stimulate the growth of fibroblasts, the cells that are responsible for producing scar tissue. Which are the important matrix metalloproteinases? MMPs are enzymes that break down collagen, the main protein in the extracellular matrix. MMP1 and MMP9 are matrix metalloproteinases that are important in the destruction of alveolar walls that occurs in alveolar pneumonia. This can lead to the formation of exudate, which can obstruct the alveoli and make it difficult for oxygen to diffuse into the bloodstream. MMP2 and MMP3 are MMPs that are important in the remodeling of the extracellular matrix that occurs in interstitial pneumonia. This remodeling can lead to the formation of scar tissue, which can obstruct the alveoli and make it difficult for oxygen to diffuse into the bloodstream. How does the clinical image differ? Alveolar pneumonia is more common in children and older adults 
while interstitial pneumonia is more common in adults between the ages of 40 and 70. Alveolar pneumonia is typically caused by bacteria, viruses or fungi, while interstitial pneumonia can have a variety of causes, including autoimmune diseases, exposure to environmental toxins and idiopathic or unknown causes. The prognosis for alveolar pneumonia is generally good with prompt diagnosis and treatment, while the prognosis for interstitial pneumonia varies depending on the underlying cause and severity of the disease. How does the outcome differ between alveolar and interstitial pneumonia? The outcome of alveolar pneumonia, the outcome of alveolar pneumonia is typically exudate formation which is the accumulation of fluid in the alveoli and alveolar collapse, which is the collapse of the alveoli. This can lead to respiratory distress and hypoxemia, a condition in which the body does not receive enough oxygen. The outcome of interstitial pneumonia is typically fibrosis, which is the formation of scar tissue and lung scarring. This can lead to respiratory insufficiency, a condition in which the lungs are not able to provide enough oxygen to the body. How is the prognosis? The prognosis for alveolar pneumonia is generally good if the infection is treated promptly. However, the prognosis for interstitial pneumonia is often poor, as there is no cure for many causes of the disease. Treatment can only help to slow the progression of the disease and manage the symptoms. How is the lethality? The lethality of alveolar pneumonia is around 5 to 10 percent. The lethality of interstitial pneumonia is around 30 to 50 percent. Alveolar pneumonia is a more common cause of community acquired pneumonia, while interstitial pneumonia is a more common cause of hospital-acquired pneumonia and ventilator-associated pneumonia. This is because alveolar pneumonia is typically caused by bacteria, while interstitial pneumonia is typically caused by viruses, autoimmune diseases or environmental exposures. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful. If you like our channel, please subscribe and hopefully see you again in the next video.